What is nanotechnology? If you're into science fiction, you might imagine a lot of tiny little robots taking over the world. <laughs> But for me, it's about designing materials at a very small scale, with features measured in nanometers. I find the subject interesting for its own sake. But I also find energy is a huge global problem. And so rather than remaining in the academic world, studying things for their own interest, I set off in a career in industry, hoping to find a, some real solutions to the problem. Some of the work I've done in hydrogen fuel cells and car engines has led to reduced pollution and lower fuel consumption. But to really make a difference, we need to switch from fossil fuels to renewable energies. And, and, <laughs> and energy storage is what's holding us back. We can generate electricity from the sun and the wind, but we need better batteries to store the energy from the sun is down and the wind is calm. So now I'm focused on battery materials, where nanotechnology is the key. How small is a nanometer? It's almost impossible to imagine something at that scale. If you imagine Uluru next to a grain of sand, Uluru is a million times larger. Well, that grain of sand is a million times larger than a carbon nanotube. In fact, many single molecules are in the range of a nanometer in size. And so designing structures right down to this level opens up a whole new world of opportunities to create new materials with properties that are very different than what we're familiar with. It's only recently become trendy to talk about nanomaterials, but in reality, they've been around a long time. One example is Damascus steel. It was first produced over 2,000 years ago, and it was legendary for its incredible strength. People thought it was magical because nobody knew what made it so strong. The mystery was finally solved in 2006, when German researchers discovered that it contained carbon nanotubes. It's still not clear how they produce them. Today, nanoparticles are used more and more in a similar way to enhance the properties of materials like metals and plastics. Nanotechnology also has many other applications, such as designing smaller circuits for all those portable devices we're so addicted to. In 1950, people were amazed that a transistor could be as small as a few millimeters. But today, the chip in your phone might contain two billion transistors. There are also many important medical applications. For example, silver nanoparticles are used as a disinfectant. Because silver is a natural antimicrobial, and by making the particles small, only a tiny amount of silver can have a large effect. Other nanoparticles can be tailored to deliver drugs to specific types of cells. They might target only cancer cells, leaving the healthy cells alone. Nanomaterials are also in development for applications where the surface area is key. A lot of chemical reactions occur at the interface of two materials, often between a solid and a fluid. You might imagine it as the interface between land and ocean, where you have so many unique species, turtles, shellfish, birds and plants, that need both land and ocean to survive. If you want more of these species, you need more beaches. Where I grew up in Western Canada, we had a lot of little islands. And so we had plenty of beaches to explore if you had access to a boat. These islands are a lot like nanoparticles in a fluid. You have a small amount of land and a small amount of ocean. But the interface between the two is huge. Islands are great for creating a lot of beaches, but what if you want to reach all those beaches by land as well as by water? Then you need to take a different approach. You need to have a continuous structure that links all of the land, as well as a continuous body of water that touches all of the edges of the land. Nanotechnology has reached the point where we're able to create complex structures like this 
at a scale where the features are only a few nanometers thick. At Nano Nouvelle, we're, developing, we're applying this principle to battery materials. Whether it's storing the electricity from your solar panel or powering your phone, we need batteries that will last longer and charge faster. Normal battery electrodes have a two-dimensional structure. They have a flat metal foil to conduct the electricity and a layer of nanoparticles on top. These particles are the active material that stores the battery's energy. So if you have more active material, you have more energy, and so the battery will last longer. But the thicker the layer is, the harder it is for the electrons to travel from the foil to the particles, and so the battery takes longer to charge. To solve this problem, we've developed a three-dimensional structure. We start with a highly porous material with tiny holes, invisible to the naked eye. This has an extremely high surface area, and we coat all of that surface with metal to form the conductor. We then apply a very thin layer of active material. Now, the electrons can easily reach all of the active material, and so the battery charges quickly. At the same time, the high surface area ensures that there's a large amount of active material, and so the battery has the energy to last longer. To put this in context, if you think of the battery inside your phone, the normal metal foil might look like this, while our material looks like this. They both look like a thin, solid sheet, but this one is mostly empty due to the tiny holes. If we take all of the surface contained inside this and laid it out flat, it would be more like this. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All this surface is contained inside this small piece of material. So this is what's so unique about this technology, because it's taking a completely different approach. While most battery researchers are looking for ways to make the particles even smaller or more complex, we've flipped the problem around to tackle it from a different angle. This is how most great innovations happen when somebody stops doing what everyone else is doing and takes a fresh new look at what really needs to be solved. The materials I've mentioned are just a few examples of the infinite possibilities that come from designing structures at the nanoscale. We're only, we've only just begun to be able to really manipulate matter at this level, and so there's still plenty left to be discovered. Nanotechnology will continue to revolutionize industries like energy, electronics and medicine. And who knows how much further it can go. Maybe one day it can take on even bigger challenges. Perhaps one day we'll be able to solve problems like, <laughs> like reversing climate change or repairing our ecosystems. We're just at the beginning of a new era of science and engineering, and the possibilities are endless. So what is nanotechnology? It's small solutions to big challenges. Thank you.